two questions um, to, for his evidence. Yes. Um, you, you may have heard recently um, that the, the U.S. Congregation of Catholic Bishops, in response to the Ryan budget, um, sent a letter to Paul Ryan, practicing Catholic, of course, saying that this was terrible and it was going to like sort of tear apart sort of communities and you know you were cutting off benefits and and I think like to sort of Catholics like me who are sort of have a more sort of libertarian sort of leaning, it's almost intolerable to see that kind of the church promote such a line of. Um, of, of kind of big state, big government, rather than promoting their own role in a big society. Um, so, wh when do you stand personally on the on the, the role of the state in the provision of social welfare or, or legislating for the family? Because well, I'm like Pontius Pilate on the United States. I wash my hands. I don't, <laughs> I don't know enough about it. Um, I, I can say a number of things, and they, they push them in slightly different directions. Um, in the United States, the amount of debt is staggering. And one fellow has estimated that for every household in the States, if you take on board every obligation that there is, that the debt is something like 700,000 plus for every, uh, uh, for every household. They have financed in the last, I don't know whether it's 5, 10 or 15 years, they have financed the, the increase in living standards not by productivity, but by borrowing. And the party's over. So, um, I don't know what they're going to do. I, 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 I like the I've got one billionaire friend who really understands money. So I said to him, if we made you President of the United States, what would you do? And he said, I'd resign me. <laughs> uh, now, Orion is certainly heading in the right direction at this that macro level. But see, the church is down there with the people who are battling, uh, who are going to be caught in all this. And... Um, uh, I, you know, and I can imagine, despite my, uh, I'm, I, I'm suspicious of the market, but I'm basically pro-market. But I can imagine speaking out for the battlers. I mean, you see, they bailed out the banks. Why the hell can't you bail out, to some extent, the poorest of the poor? And there's all sorts of things. I don't, I don't know whether we can do anything about it. But um, you know, if somebody's getting a wage of 35 or 40 million a year. Seems to me something's awry. So uh, I don't know whether that helps you. But like, should the government correct that if it's awry? Is that the role of the government or the market? Well, I don't know. Um, you see, you need ethical people in the market for it to work. If you don't have good people in, in the market, uh, the auditors won't tell the truth, and that certainly happens to some extent. If you don't have good people in the market. Uh, They'll keep handing out loans to people, as they did in some of these housing societies, knowing that those people have no chance in the world of paying them back. No chance in the world. But they got a good cut on it as long as it lasted. Um, and uh, if the market, I think, uh, uh, doesn't get itself in order, then the governments will. It's already started in France. And one way of approaching uh, uh, this is, you know, to have massive uh, taxation for those who are uh, who were on 450 or 45 million a year. So it's not, so there's no easy answers. Uh, but my, I'm quite attracted to Ryan. Uh, yes? Uh, there have been situations in some countries already, I know Canada and I think some of the Scandinavian countries, where not merely has same-sex marriage and things like that been legislated for, but incursions are being made on the freedom of speech of Catholics and other religious groups. Um, I know there have been pastors in Scandinavian countries jailed for expressing traditional views on Christianity and similar, uh, oh, for expressing traditional Christian views on homosexuality and similar things have happened in Canada. Are you concerned that something like that may be in the works here in Australia? 
Yeah, it's got to be a possibility because it's happened in other countries. And we've got to be very vigilant now so it doesn't build up any head of steam. Uh, now there's freedom. People are free to teach those things uh, if they believe uh, that that's, uh, the homosexual activity is okay. So we believe in a democracy, in a free society, they're free to teach that. So no government has got any right to tell us what we should teach uh, in our schools or what we should preach in, um, in our sermons. So in the United States, they've just had a fortnight for freedom um, to, to preserve the, uh, the, the freedom uh, of religion on the, that school. Um, so for example, there's a proposal at the moment, the moment to muscle the press and make them more responsible. And God knows the press are often irresponsible. But I wouldn't want another body uh, because who would be on the body? And if they, you know, they got, uh, they imposed their things there, who would be next on the list? Perhaps us. Um, so, yes, there's, there's uh, uh, you're quite right, we, we need to be vigilant and uh, I think you've got a pastoral challenge coming up. There are three things you've got to do. Hit it hard, hit it early and hit it off. Um, and sort of get the head of the game rather than Isn't that kind of also a bit of a two-way street? You know, we say that we have to uh, be diligent in not allowing them to control what we say. Mm -hmm. But we also can't necessarily control what they say. You know, you said that the Beatles of Rolling Stones, they were big advocates mm -hmm. of um, contraception and... Uh, I'll do general promise. Yeah, general, 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 yeah. Personal freedom. Great extension of personal now, freedom. Now, we... Uh, like all the Catholic Church and Christian, um, we disagree with that strongly. Yeah. But we kind of have to allow for it if we want to maintain our status quo and us being able to have our freedom of speech. Yeah, sure. We're Democrats. We're Democrats. Well, at least I am. <laughs> and it means that I believe in freedom of speech. I believe in majority government. Uh, and these people have got a right to, to put their point of view. But we've got a right to say it's, it's wrong. And what we've got to do is have secular arguments uh, that will influence the middle ground. I'm sorry I'm interrupting you. No, 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 no problem. But, so that would be the best way of, well, in terms of dealing with this issue, we can't force it on them saying, no, you can't say that kind of stuff. No. So the best way would be trying to find that secular middle ground. No, 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 you don't, no, you don't necessarily have to find middle ground. You have to find secular arguments or reasons for saying some things are wrong. We're not trying to find middle ground on abortion. We believe killing the unborn is intrinsically wrong. Um, we respect uh, the rights of people who are homosexuals, respect them as persons, we respect their right to, uh, uh, to teach that that's a legitimate form of human expression. But uh, we say, well, we don't agree. We believe sexual activity should be confined to a man and a woman in marriage and open the life. And now that's not a particularly popular view at the moment. Uh, so sort of, but we've got to insist on our right to say this, even if it is a minority. And I, see, as the situation disintegrates in society in your lifetime, there's going to be more and more of a chance for the Christian point of view, because the Christian message works. Breeds uh, happy people. Um, if we were all following the Ten Commandments, society would be better. Roman society was much rougher and wilder than ours. You know, people fought animals to death, they fought one another to the death. Uh, Practicing infanticide, especially of girls. And the, the church spread in that because people saw the advantages of. Christian living, it's a bit like, and there are many reasons, but it's a bit like the increasing number of non-Catholic families who want to send kids into Catholic schools. Because they see uh, that we've, we've got some. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Your Eminence, um, I, I agree that we should preserve the family as much as possible. And um, do you... 
Do you agree with the with the, uh, the proposal for the board that we should bring back that we should tighten up the divorce laws and bring back something like fault based divorce, for, for instance? I've got uh, I've got the trouble for just touching on this topic uh, before, but let me just say this. Probably the marriage contract is the only <coughs> contract you can break on any grounds without any penalty. And the lawyers here, they might be able to nominate some other contracts that you can break uh, just when you want to and uh, run away from your ob obligations. Um, so I, I, I think that will be something, there are such social costs to um, uh, divorce. And recently when I was away, I, I cut out, and I might even do a little Sunday Telegraph article on it. One fellow who had divorced and has seen the damage it done, it's done to the kids, said a lot of us who divorced were selfish. We divorced for the wrong reason. See, in the old days when there were matchmakers, people went into marriage with very low expectations. In most cases, they were pleasantly surprised. <laughs> now, of course, with this romantic and often sometimes unrealistic ideal of romantic love, well, when uh, problems start, to happen, people are not well equipped. And also, our society, uh, you know, hasn't trained people for hardship of any sort. So it'd be interesting to see what uh, what sort of a market for your ideas you might be able to get in the future. But we've got to persuade the middle ground. You spoke a lot about uh, freedom of speech and allowing even our cultural opponents uh, to have um, their say. But what do you have? What do you do when you have a culture of black arts where people back up the dominant culture without any critical spirit? No one, there's no discernment of right or wrong or discernment of truth in any form in the media or hearing movies or books or anything. How do you come back that? Well, one of the things I say is I tell people, test everything. See, sometimes a lot of people grow up, and the only thing they'll look at analytically or skeptically is the Christian teaching. <laughs> They've got to look at, uh, see whether the alternatives, or whether they work, whether they're any better. So um, I recently came across uh, a family, and uh, I think one of the fellows was a bit wild. Heaven knows what he can do. But uh, his sister, an adult sister, said to me, you know, my brother remembers when uh, uh, you came to our school and said, test everything. And he had. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but no matter what conclusions he, he drew, they might, I got no reason really to conclude that they were the wrong one. But it's, uh, with so many voices and pressures on us, this is the only way we can go. And we've got to equip people to think rationally and, uh, and understand the Christian basic. And uh, to try to get across to the kids, you know, the Ten Commandments are not negotiable. You don't use your conscience to unravel one of the Ten Commandments. Shall not kill, shall not steal, shall not lie, shall not pinch your neighbor's wife, uh, or vice versa. Um, you know, they, these are the moral framework we've got to drill into our kids. So uh, it's hard enough to be good in some areas when you know what's right and wrong. If you've got no idea what's right and wrong, then you, you know, you can get into terrible trouble. Uh, Your Eminence, I'm studying Latin and word princeps came up. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but the cardinals um, were given the title of princeps, uh, prince of the church, mm -hmm. princes of the church. Um, you had to say I don't look very princely. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> hey, that's not what I was going to say. <laughs> no, only that. And also the bishops were <laughs> treated as, as royalty, you know? and um, in, in centuries gone by. I've noticed, um, you know, 
this has gone to a great degree, whether from the within the church or within society. Um, what has, why has that happened? Do you think? And um, has it? What are the what are the ups and downs? What are the positives and negatives for the uh, the ministry of Bishop and Cardinal? Uh, it's a it's a, it's a very good question, and there the, 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 uh, there are many uh, levels to the answer. We're an irreverent people, we Australians. And now, for example, in the United States, when the President of the United States comes into the press corps, you know what they're like, everybody in the room stands. Everybody. Today. Now imagine our press corps standing for our Prime Minister, or the Leader of the Opposition, or, or for himself or anyone else. And we've got that uh, tradition of uh, irreverence. Um, Another thing uh, which we've got to remember, and I think we need to talk more about this, we're a minority. Catholics are a minority, practicing Catholics are a minority in a secular society which is pressing on us, and I think either we grow or they'll grow. And I think we need to talk uh, um, much more about what do you do as a minority in uh, when the majority is different and to some extent hostile or indifferent. Well, one of the things you've got to do is explicitly try to grow, get your message out there. Um, one of the things it's meant is that the bishops, we've got to earn our money much more than we did in the past. Once upon a time, if you're a, um, if you're a bishop, people would just listen to you and might not, with, with respect. The people are better educated today, they're much more uh, demanding. And so, uh, you know, you've got to get out like I'm trying to do now, uh, and try and sell the product. Uh, I don't think that's at all bad. See, once upon a time, kids at school would not be seen and not heard. I don't like that. I much prefer the kids to speak up. I mean, I don't think so. could be that our bigger challenge is indifferentism. I mean, I thank God for quieter times, but you know, other times when I come here in the years past, there's been great mobs of protesters. Uh, thanks be to God, there's nobody here that looks particularly like that they go to protest. Uh, what's it say about the university, though? Which is better? I don't, I don't know. Well, it depends whether it's simply an indication of irreverence or it's an indication that those with what I think are mistaken views, perhaps not as energetic as they were, or that the Catholic community is a bit stronger. I don't know what to say. 